got another 19 Pathfinder with uh, no radio and heat controls. Uh, that's the CAN network that I'm back probed at. Right, I hope you can see that. Right back there. And so here's the complaint. Turn the volume on and off. Put you there. Nothing works. Radio button doesn't work. Radio doesn't work. Disc doesn't work. The only thing that works is the eject button. But uh, it's hardwired. No. No HVAC. Nothing in the nav. And I'll put you back on the screen. And as I'm pushing buttons, you can see it really doesn't change much. It's like we have our clocking signal here. But uh, I'm not getting any change, any inputs. So uh, I'll go over the wiring and where I'm testing and why I think it's doing that. I'll show you this real quick. You can see the network still going. And really all I've done was I've unplugged the wire here. So it's like whatever signals are getting here, it's like this module is no good. I'm going to check the powers and grounds, and uh, most likely we're going to get a new one of these guys. And, uh, of course, I'll be uh, doing an after capture. But, yeah, it's dead. Not the first one of these I've seen, but it makes for an interesting capture. Maybe we'll decode it and check it out. So here's a quick overview of the system that I'm working on. Um, the AV control unit, the display control unit, the switch uh, that is in question, the multifunction switch. Um, everything in dark is CAN and everything kind of in these lighter lines is hardwired. Although my complaint is the uh, radio and the heat buttons don't work, I'm going to kind of just keep pushing buttons and just see if I can find any clues. Uh, one thing I found was interesting is None of the buttons worked except for the eject button, the disc eject, and it's hardwired. So why is that a clue? Well, when I pushed that button, I started hearing mechanical sounds in here, like it's trying to eject a disc. And it also put out to the display no disc to eject. So I'm like, all right, cool, this guy can kind of work. Um, this guy can work. And also pushing the steering wheel switches. Um, it's hardwired through the clock spring into the combination meter. Well, the combination meter was processing that input and putting it out on the network. And depending on what buttons I would push, if it pertained to it, it would show up here. And in order for it to show up here, uh, this guy has to pretty much be involved to make it show up there. So it, it's kind of you know clues there's no right and wrong way i guess to um to gather your information or, or to get your game plan together this is just how i do it so obviously with this not working this is a control unit i'm going to attack this thing just like i do any other can problems i'm going to verify signal integrity uh that's with my pico scope that's coming up next i'm going to verify and load test powers and grounds and honestly if this control unit has a is on a good network and has powers and grounds basically if it has everything in life to succeed and yet it does not it goes into trash and it and it gets replaced um, that's how I attack every can network issue powers ground signal integrity um, you give me all three of those add a suspected control unit I'm throwing a control unit out and I'm putting a new one in um, now, this thing did have a DTC U1300. Um, I'm going to have to knock on the ESM a little bit. So what I don't want you to do is follow this. So let's just see what it says. I'm going to click yes. Uh, there's a little description. And DTC U1300 is simultaneously displayed as one of the following. Um, I didn't see any of these. I simply had that possible causes pretty much everything that we just looked at could be a possible cause uh, and if we read through here if you 13 it is displayed with these which it was not so I'm gonna answer no we're gonna go to two and we're gonna perform the
confirmation procedure turn this on turn this off select this is 1300 detected we're going to hit yes check if any DTC other than 1300 is detected the answer would be no and it tells me to replace the display control unit um, I can tell you you do not want to do that so use the flowchart sometimes within the flowchart you'll pick up little specifications um, resistance checks pins pin terminals there's useful information in it but to blindly follow this verbatim um, could get you into a world of world of um, stuff so let's look at a wiring diagram real quick so here's the multifunction switch it's hardwired to the component in question so this tells this this guy should put the information out on can and then decisions should be made um, I'm back probed at six or eight and six that's high and low or low and high I can't remember here is the eject the hardwired and I thought that was kind of neat uh, because when I hit eject those signals went to the AV controller it starts making a bunch of noise um, there's no disk in it so it puts out on the network to the display controller which is here uh, says no disk here the steering wheel switches up here they were able to communicate through the spiral cable to the meter the meter then was able to put the information out such as you know volume up volume down um, I can't remember why I probably pushed all of them source you know, change FM AM and all that stuff uh, so it went to the combination meter it got out on the CAN network and everybody understood it because this guy sent the signals out the display showed it so I'm honed in here the Pico captures you're gonna see I'm back probed here and here and after I realized that that signal was great I verified my power here load tested of course I verified my ground here that was all good so with good signal good power good ground I've got no choice but to replace this and I did and you'll see the before and after and at the end um, a little video of it working so if I would have replaced this um, you wouldn't be uh, seeing this video or if you would have I would have been eating a lot of uh, crow we shall say egg on the face so Pico captures coming up next and then a small video at the end showing the car fixed thank you guys for watching all right so here's the capture of inside the car when I was moving the uh, knobs and pushing the buttons you can see I have four buffers and although there's a uh, you know a lot of data going here uh, when you see the after you'll see that uh, this is nothing compared to when it actually works I had mentioned about the clocking signal um, I'm not even sure if that's the proper term but what I was referring to you see these darker pulses here I mean there's actually a lot of data in there um, we're gonna decode it I have no idea what this means but what I do know and I find it interesting is if I just put a, a line here and here 500 milliseconds or or so so if I lock those cursors you can see that it sends whatever this information is every half second um, so it's pretty specific so I just refer to it as a clocking signal kind of a side note so I'm gonna decode this signal and the reason I'm going to decode it is I feel like if the software within Pico can decode this signal then my computers on the network should be able to decode this signal and if that's the case then I'm moving on so let's do this the way I like to do it is this channel A is can high pulled high and channel B is pulled low so I like to go to my tool section and do a little math channel and I like to do A minus B and what that does is kind of filters out the noise uh, it's kind of the way the control units on the car would read the signal the control units on the car don't really look at both they look at an average so 
that's how I like to do it. And it's going to come up with that right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn A and B off to keep down on confusion. Um, <clears throat> I have lots of videos out showing how to set this up, but uh, we're just going to do it again. So how fast is this signal? Well, let's measure one bit. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Now remember, this whole packet is a byte, and within the packet is a bit. So we're going to measure a bit. So I'm going to pick on the smallest one, and I'm just going to put a cursor right there. And I'm going to put a cursor right somewhere around in there. Let's see. So we know the signal's pretty fast, 490 hertz. I'm going to call it 500k baud. Um, I could probably zoom in and fine tune that a little bit, but it's close enough for me to call it 500k. Um, I already know that, but in case you didn't, this would be a way to find out. So let's go ahead and decode this. Um, go back to my tools, and we're going to go to serial decoding. I've already made a channel, but what we'll do is we'll just do that again. Uh, let me delete that one, and then let's hit create. And we want to can. Uh, the data we want to use is A minus B. Uh, these two boxes populate. I usually leave that alone. We already determined it's 500k baud, and we know it's the high. It's being pulled high, so let's hit OK. Hit OK, and there we go. I have four buffers. It is decoding buffer number two, and really all I'm looking at is for check marks. If I have all kinds of check marks right in this column here, that tells me that all these signals are good. I don't know what they mean, but they're readable. Uh, the control units on the, on the network in the car should have no problem picking this up. I call it uh, signal integrity. So let's look at all the buffers. Take it a minute. There it goes. So now it's decoded all four buffers. And there again, I'm looking at the validation here. And a quick, quick scroll down. I've got all check marks. So at this point, I'm moving on. I'm looking at powers and grounds now with these control units because nothing on this network says I'm bad. Now let me just show you real quick if we made a boo-boo or if the network was bad. So let's pretend that I click 250. Uh, we know it's 500, but I'm going to put it on 250 and I'm going to hit OK. Now look at that. If you pick the wrong um, speed, you're going to get a whole bunch of problems here. Now let's say if I had picked the correct speed and I got all this bunch of gibberish here, all these X's, I would now be looking more at the signal versus powers and grounds. Because without good packets of data, um, control unit you know, is blind. It, it, it can't do anything. So let's go back to my good, go back to 500, and hit OK, and uh, now we're back in business. So at this point, I'm moving on. Um, I can show you the good capture. This was the bad, and like I said, every time, let me get rid of this. During this whole capture, I was pushing buttons and turning the volume knob, and um, of course, nothing worked. So I'll show you the good one real quick. Uh, good radio controls. <clears throat> There's four buffers again, and you can really see how much more data is being transmitted because this control unit, this is the new faceplate. Uh, it's talking now. It's putting out information on the can for all the, all to see. So um, this car was fixed. Uh, I got a little, another little YouTube, or shoot, another little GoPro video that I'll show you of it working, and um, kind of another little spiel for CAN. Uh, the last CAN video I had or put out was um, I had a bad signal. Uh, once I fixed that, the car was fixed. This car is opposite. I have a good signal. I have control units that can't talk. So 
Worthwhile little video, very expensive parts dealing with the audio system and availability is very scarce. So as with any diagnosis, you know, I want to make sure I'm kind of spot on dealing with high dollar parts and, you know, limited parts availability. I mean, it's not like you're misdiagnosing a, a turn signal ball here or something like that. So uh, this decoding does help me do that, although I have no idea what this means. I just know it needs to be there and it needs to look good. So thank you guys for watching. One more little video and uh, the subscriber count's looking awesome. And don't forget the Auto Nerds link if you want anything Pico. Um, I was on the website knocking around the other day. I see there's a lot of back orders. Um, if you really want a scope and you can wait, go ahead and, and reserve yours because once he gets them, man, they're going to go. And I can tell you, if you buy through Auto Nerds, the service after the sale is simply amazing. So there's my commercial, and um, you guys have a good one. So we've got our new uh, switch panel put in, and what I'm doing now is I'm just moving the volume knob a lot. See how the can really starts populating more? Um, of course, now I'm pushing some buttons. You may be able to hear it beeping. But uh, you can definitely hear the radio playing. So, let's say AM, FM, so yeah. It's definitely fixed. They call this the multifunction switch. I think this is the AV and heater controls. Uh, this is hardwired to this. This transmit CAN signals to this module back here this big shiny one right there that's your AV controller you don't want to get into replacing those unless you have to because they're really expensive even if you can get one but we've got more activity on the line um, I'm gonna try to save it and maybe we can decode it and see something cool thank you guys for watching